welcome to Wendy and Ria's Art. everybody it's Wendy back again I'm just going to start on this canvas 50 by 70 centimeters uh, this one I'm just going to use a, a limited color palette um, I'm starting with black then I'll be using some charcoal some line work some nickel azo gold from golden and I'll go from there. I might then add also add a bit of yellow ochre or something like that. But um, starting off with some black charcoal. Oh, actually, no, it's black free flow, sorry, by Atelier. So just gonna put some of that down. So I'm just using my Cattle switch, so I can't think of anything tonight. Okay. And I've got one of our homemade brushes here. Um, Rhea actually made this one. Oh, okay, so that one's just come apart, but I'm still going to use this end of it just to see if I can scratch. Yep, so I might actually try and reattach this one. It's got some nice texture there. I think it's the dried agapanthus flower head, but i um, making some lovely marks there. Scratching through there. got this little tool here I've no idea what it's called or where I got it from but it's just got some little metal prongs on the end of it so again I'm just going to scratch in through with that as well Some really nice texture. And just yeah, definitely have to reattach this. <laughs> it's really cool. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there to dry. Um, the only other thing I might do, I've Got this gum nut on the end here, so I'm not quite sure. Okay, making some marks with that. It's got a little point on the end of it, so it's quite cool. enough so I'll leave that there for now. I have now a Portugal soft carbon pencil so I'm just going to do a little bit of mark making before I put the nickel as our gold on. Nickel Azo Gold by Golden. It's just got a little bit of a film here. Sometimes you just have to just take that little bit of plastic off the top there where it dries. Okay. So I'm going to put some 
Okay, now I'm going to give it a little squirt. I'm just going for some drips up the top here. Actually, I better get some paper towel ready for those drips. So I'll stop there. I don't want them all to go to the very end. So I'll keep those ones long and then have some of these ones shorter. Okay, so I'll let that dry and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'll just put the camera back down and zoom in a bit. All right, so now I'm going to put some more drips in over in this area here with the Nicoloso gold again. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you can't have too many Nicoloso gold drips. see this but so I'm just going to pull it down this way because I want them to come out this way from the collage okay perfect perfect exactly what I was wanting all right so now I'll let that one dry Okay, now I was going to go with the green gold and golden, but I've got this Dale Rowney antelope brown colour and I'm sort of wanting to give that a try actually. So I'm just going to pop that in there. It's a nice brown. Okay, yep, so that's going to go. It's almost a, a mix between a a brown and a oxide yellow. It's gorgeous, really nice. Okay, a little bit more. Okay,
so, sort of rub this in just so it's not too bright. just going to bring some from here and just bring it down like that and then I'll see where I'm at. It's really quite relaxing doing this one because I'm not trying to fill the whole canvas at this point. Um, just, just wanting to make some nice big bold areas really. green up here. Let's see how far that goes. Just to come up to that orange. Okay. All right. Okay, so back again. Um, I ended up taking the collage off because there were just too many bubbles and it just didn't seem to be adhering. So I have another one that I can use and I might leave that for the top top layers. But again, this is quite crinkled and I'm thinking this is gonna have a lot of air bubbles too, so we'll see. All right, so I'm trying not to get too precious with the bottom layer, so I decided to add some ink just all over the place, just to, um, just to cover up some of these whites. So this is, Atelier Artist Pigmented Ink, and this is the sepia. So I'm just going to add some drops. of alcohol just to add a little bit of texture Just realised I don't really have anything on the black area, so I'm just going to put some inks on there.
been having a good look at this and I've decided I really love the background. And this is what I'm going to add, a beautiful Australian barking owl. And I think that would look awesome about this size and sort of about here. So this will be my focal point. Um, and because owls are nocturnal and awake at night sort of thing, um, I've made up a glaze using some Atelier Payne's Grey Free Flow with the Atelier Glazing Liquid Gloss. So that in the Free Flow Payne's Grey and that in the um, Glazing Liquid Gloss. And so what I'm going to do is paint that over the whole painting to try and knock back the colours a little bit, but also filling in the white areas so it gives the more of a look of darkness and night time. And it will just really give it the, the look that I'm now going for. I love it when artworks just sort of they, they change, they, you start off with one idea and then as you're going, it develops into something else and I absolutely love it when that happens. And I also love being able to add an, add a, an animal or a bird, um, it's really cool. So I've got another piece of collage and this time I'll make sure I put plenty of matte medium underneath. I don't know if that was the problem before or you can see it's been all scrunched up. Um, so it's lovely and textured but yeah I had a lot of problems as you saw with that first one. Um, laying down the texture and stopping the air bubbles. So I've sketched the owl on um, with a white pencil, but it's very hard to see. So I'm just going along the outline with a pit pastel pen, white, just so I can see the main bits. I'm getting ready to do the barking owl on my canvas and as you can see I've got a lot of pencils here. I've started sharpening them. These are the pastel pencils. I like doing my animals in pastels. So I've got them lovely and sharp using this so I thought I'd just show you the process. Sometimes they'll break the pastel pencils but um, I have this sharpener here just in case I've got one that doesn't want to play with this sharpener. And this is called, what's it called, a hobble. And you just run the pencil like this. Like this. But it's very slow and I like to do it with this better. So I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to, I've also got these here. Um, so I've got heaps of pastel pencils ready, but I've picked out the colors I think I'll need. And these are my new pastels um, that I can use in some places as well. But I'll just find one that's, um, okay, so this one's got some sharpness to it, but we'll just see if we can improve that. Pastel pencils can be a bit temperamental. Okay, let's have a look. All right. 
there's a beautiful sharp end and this is called the helix pencil sharpener highly recommend okay so i've sharpened as many pencils as i can tolerate and now i'm going to start now this barking owl i have a reference uh, i'm not going to be do doing it as photorealism i'm really just going to be picking out the to start with the lighter parts because he's got a dark background i'm going to really use that as his dark feathers um, and just go in with the light ones and then see how that looks and maybe add a little bit of um, lighter tones to the dark because this is quite quite dark okay so starting with his eyes so i'll do his i'll do his face fairly accurately the owl with a few coats of fixative now it's a Krillon fixative I'm just trying to think where I put it uh, yeah it's Krillon fixative um, 
Fixative always knocks back your lights. It, I haven't found one yet that doesn't change what you've done, but that doesn't bother me because sometimes I actually quite like the knocked back look. In this case, it's fine, um, but what I will do is use a few other things, other supplies, other mediums to go over it. Otherwise, I find what I keep doing is going over it and pastel spraying it, going over it, and, and once I, I think I sprayed 10 times on a koala, so I thought I'm not doing that to myself again. So I love the look of the pastel. I, I mostly always do the animal in pastels because I just love that soft textured look. And as I said, I'm not doing a photo realistic out. What I like to do is leave some of the background showing, which I've done quite a bit here because the background is dark and, and the color of the darker uh, feathers. So I love to, to have the owl look like he's in the painting, not just popped on top. So I'm just going over this part of the eye again with a, what's it called? A pit pen, Faber-Castell pit pen. Just had a bit of dark over that eye there that I didn't want. Okay, so. That yellow was the perfect colour for that. I really like how that looks. Um, so what I'll do now is use some Posca pens and some Liquitex paint markers to actually go over some of the light areas and just highlight some of those feathers a bit more. So I've got a fairly fine white one here, Posca. Um, let me just have a little look. So I want some around here. 